prices. Josh Frydenberg is the Federal Energy, energy Minister. He joins us now to discuss how the government plans to tighten the screws on energy retailers. Good morning, Minister. Thanks for your time. Nice to be with you, Paul. Now, the, that letter that went out talked about um, the different um, plans that people are on. Mm. What can you tell us about that? Well, there are two different types of offers. There's a market offer, which is often a discount uh, that is provided to a household, and there's a standing offer, which is a more expensive form of offer. Now, what we have found out is that people have not moved um, their uh, retailer or their existing contract uh, for five years or more in over 47% um, of cases. So what we want to ensure is that people have the flexibility, they have the transparency uh, to move to a lower offer and that the companies assist them to do that, particularly for vulnerable households. I thought the best thing to do was to uh, try and scope out what the, uh, what the competitors were doing and then change your plans. But you're saying that people are being dotted within the the same energy provider? Well, what we're finding is that you might get a discount for one or two years, mm. but the company... To come across. To come across, but then the company won't tell you, mm. three or four years in, that that discount has ended and you'll be under a misapprehension about the deal that you are getting. Uh, now, some of the companies are doing the right thing. Uh, we saw, for example, 26,000 vulnerable customers being moved from those more expensive standing offers to a cheaper market offer, but mm. we want to see that across the board. Uh, uh, and we just want some of the confusion around people's energy bills to be removed and we want to put the onus back on the companies. How many people are being overcharged, do you think? Oh, well, look, we have seen a large number of people who are on these standing offers who should be on the market offer. In one case, it was 26,000, uh, and that was just one retailer. Uh, there will be tens of thousands of people who could be affected by this. And what would your advice be to households, um, uh, people who pay their bills? Uh, should they be um, seeking to work a better deal with their retailers, or in fact, just change over every couple of, uh, every 18 months? Well, they should always be putting the pressure on their retailers to get the best possible deal, and they should be looking through the market for that best possible deal as well. Uh, the Australian Energy Regulator has found that an individual household could save $1,000 or more a year just by moving power companies. Mm. So that's what we really need to do. We need to get to the bottom of this. Uh, we're already taking action on a number of fronts, including increasing the gas supply into the market, reining in the poles and wire costs, uh, and a number of other things. But this is an important area. I know the Australian Competition Consumer Commission is investigating all of these different competition matters and is due to release uh, part findings next month. Um, so why call this meeting now? Are you, you, you trying to sort of move the discussion away from uh, uh, a bigger, broader discussion about reliability, accountability? Well, the Prime Minister, the Treasurer and myself are in constant contact with the ACCC. Um, we'll be getting just an interim report uh, in the coming month uh, and then the final report will be in June next year. Now, we can't wait till June next year. Uh, we need to take action now and we got a report from the Australian Energy Market Commission uh, just last month saying that we have seen a large number of people being stuck on these higher expensive offers rather than moving to the cheaper ones. What did you make of uh, Glencore's comments yesterday about um, uh, the abolition of the renewable energy target, uh, once again making that claim? Well, we've been clear. We're not abolishing the renewable energy target. That actually would only lead to higher prices. Uh, we've seen a five-fold increase in renewable investment in 2016 what do you make compared of those, to the, 2015. The, those are big companies, though, um, once again warning that this is going to drive um, companies out of business. Well, Glencore's absolutely right that affordable, reliable power is the number one priority, and that's why we are taking action on a number of fronts. They're also right that the state should drop their, their own renewable energy targets and we should have a national single response uh, to this challenge. But at the same time, we provided, uh, through the coalition government and the amendments we moved 18 months ago, um, a relief for trade-exposed industries so that they're not subject to the renewable energy you target. You're constantly looking at that and, um, and taking another look at it? Well, we're not going to abolish the renewable energy target as it is. Now, um, just on that phone call from the Prime Minister and, uh, and Donald Trump last night, I suppose you were surprised to see it's the, the uh, transcripts bob up in the Washington Post. Um, it was terse. Uh, what jumped out at us, we were talking about it before, was um, the lack of um, seemingly empathy for the people involved. It was all politics. 
Well, look, I disagree with that. Um, we have an issue here in Australia that we came to government to solve, which was the fact that we saw 50,000 unauthorised boat arrivals. The Prime Minister reiterated in that phone call to the President um, that our principal strategy here is to deny those evil people smugglers Deterrent. a product to sell. That's why these people are not being settled in Australia, and it is working. Yeah, there was talk about deterrent, but not so much about the, uh, the, the care of these people. Well, if they get to settle in the United States, then they will have a better life. And uh, drumlines. Uh, the front page <laughs> of the West Australian this morning, um, you're saying that the West Australian government's not doing enough to protect people from sharks? Absolutely. Uh, we've seen both in Queensland and New South Wales, those governments roll out strategies involving nets, mm -hmm. involving drumlines, and between them we've seen one fatality in a protected beach in half a century. Uh, in the last 17 years in Western Australia, tragically, there have been 15 fatalities. I call upon the Western Australian Government to put in place these drum lines, these nets, to protect people on the beach. It's not hard mm. to do, and where the Federal Government's approval is required, I will quickly consider any such approach. Which type of uh, drum lines? There are different ones, aren't there? There are different ones. The smart drum lines that they've been using in New South Wales have caught a large number of, uh, of sharks. They're not fatal. The shark gets hooked. Mm. A message goes uh, to the scientists on shore. They come out. They release the shark further out to sea. The shark survives and the people are safer mm. on the beach. Not all the sharks, I guess, though. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there will be fatalities at some point. But the reality is human life comes first before the shark's life. Minister, thanks for your time. Good luck with the meeting next week. Thank you. And uh, we'll hope to hear from that as well. All the best.